I'm working on A and C walls, the logs that cap over the joist. I've got these already cut on A wall. I've got my center line here, and I measured down an inch and a half on the lower side of the center line to the top of the cutout and cut this all out. I've got seawall marked and ready to cut and I'll show you how I do that. I've got these laid out. You can see the lines there that I drew. This is on seawall. When I'm scoring these, I'll, I'll show you how I actually do that. I like to cut along that line and when I cut that with a chainsaw, it keeps it from splintering out past the line over here. And I've got the depth. I'm coming down three and a quarter inches from the inside face. The joist actually pocket three inches in, but I like to have a little bit of extra depth here on this to uh, just ensure that I don't have any problems. I've got my layout chart here. I went up and I measured everything to the edge of the, the joist on the top and laid it out on my log. This is 9C. I transferred all my numbers that I had written down to the log and I'm using a, a, this small steel square and I've, I've made my marks here, what would be the top of it and the sides. And I like to score this with a steel square. I don't like to use an aluminum square. I like to use steel because it, it just seems to hold up better. But as far as scoring, I'm using a, a utility knife, which is really sharp. And I like to lay my square up on that line and just cover the line with the square just where I don't see the line and then I'll I'll score it just make a few marks there to uh, put a little cut in that and I do that all the way around and so when I'm, I'm coming through here with my chainsaw I'm not going to uh, splinter out here this right here will be cut out and so I always put my square on the line and cut and make the score mark on the waist side of what I'm going to cut out. To get the depth of my cut, like I said, I'm coming three and a quarter inches to give myself just a little bit extra. I just lay my square up there on top and I'm marking three and a quarter here and three and a quarter here. And I just draw a line across there. So that let me know where to plunge my saw. And if you see, this line right here is connected to the actual shoulder and I've got another line drawn here that's coming in and at a, it's at an angle. I like to give myself a little bit of extra here and here so that when I set this log down and it goes straight down over the tops of the joist, I'll just be touching right here and here. And that gives me a little bit of room to play with there. This just makes it easier. To, to set this down. If I tried to cut this straight across here, and if I didn't have this perfectly clean everywhere, it'd be a pretty good struggle to get this to drop straight down over that joist. So I'm gonna fire up a saw, and I'm gonna plunge these and cut into the back side, or the, what would actually be the top of the cutout. And then I'll, I'll cut this line here across, just staying away from the my score line just a little bit and then I'll take my little carving bar saw and I'll plunge this and cut straight down to this depth right here. When I make a plunge cut I like to lay the saw up there and just see where my line is and I can look on the saw this happens to be a steel and the, the word steel is on the bar and I just kind of sight down the side of the log and see on the bar about where I would be when I cut in about where I need to stop and go down the line. Now, an easier way to do this is to take a little torpedo level that has the magnet on it and just set it on there, just like that. And when you start to make your cut, you can look at your level and see if you need to raise the back of your saw up or down. Now, I've done enough of these that I really don't have to do that. I can kind of judge where I'm at by just laying the bar up there on top and just coming back and just dropping it. When I'm going to make a plunge cut with a chainsaw, that's one of your cuts that you really need to be cautious about because of kickback. And I've got a, a smaller saw, which for me seems to have more of a chance of kickback than my, big, my bigger husky saws. 
because of the weight that they have and the power. Now this saw's got a lot of power to it. When I start to cut this, there's a way to do this which is safer, which reduces your kickback. You set your saw up there with it running and you start in with it and when you get that tip buried, then you can swing around square with it and work your way down and you don't have as much chance of kickback. So let's see how this goes. Now I can take my carving bar and I'll plunge this right here and clip the little part down on, on these two cuts because of the tip of the bar being rounded, you can't get all the way into the corner. But with my carving bar, which has a much, much smaller tip, I can clip those little points and then just hit this with a hammer and it'll pop right out. I've been cleaning out the back side of this cutout here for the joist. And what I'm doing is I've got my tri-square or combination square. Just, I've always called it a tri-square. I've got it set on three and a quarter, which is the depth that I cut these. And I'm just laying it on top and checking to see where I need to clean up right in here. And I can check it. Right there, I'm really close to it. Pretty much all the way around, actually. So I've got the clearance, the quarter inch clearance I need on the back side of this pocket. And the next thing I'll do is clean these shoulders up right down to the line that I scored. Yeah, I've got a good clean shoulder there. Okay, now to clean this part of it up, I like to stand the log up because it's easier for me to uh, push in like this and just try to come down on it. There's something else that I wanted to show you on these pockets. Well, after you do your plunge cuts, I don't get right up against the line when I'm doing that. And what I've done here, I've taken my chisel and I've paired right down to the line that I scored. And I can take my, my square and lay up there and see how much wood that I need to take out of here. And so I'm a little heavy on the back 
And since I've made this yellow mark, I can actually take my little carbon bar saw and lightly brush that and save, save some time paring this back. So I'll fire that little saw up and just lightly brush this in here and take some of this wood out and not have to do as much with a slick or a chisel. I'm in good shape there. All I have to do is just a little bit of cleanup with a chisel and I'll have that one finished. This log is now ready to set.